Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jose from Florida Hub Blogs. We're in Montgomery, Alabama, and we're doing our house search, you know, all the things that it takes to move. It's overwhelming. I want you to watch this video before you buy a house in Florida, or if you're thinking about moving to Florida, I want you to watch this because this is my story of why I had to leave Florida, and you're going to find it very helpful. So we didn't want to leave Florida. We wanted to be in Florida. Um, about six months ago, we toured the state of Florida, and uh, you could buy a house in Ocala for seventy to eighty thousand that was inhabitable. There was a lot of options six months ago. However, with the world situation, um, a lot of buyers are leaving large cities like New York, Boston. You know, all the big cities. They're all leaving the big cities, and they want to find places like Florida. So those people who were on the fence about moving, they weren't really sure what they wanted to do. They were on the fence. You know, that's probably the best term. They weren't really sure if they wanted to stay or come. They made up their minds and said, I've had enough, we're getting out of the city. And those people came to Florida in massive volumes. And on the background, you have real, real estate developers who are buying entire cities out. And what they're trying to do is that they're trying to buy all the real estate in Florida that they can because they wanna make new developments. But if there's a flow of old houses entering the market, affordable housing entering the market, they can't sell their massive houses. The only way they can sell their massive houses is if they're able to eliminate uh, all of the, the market opportunities. So what they're doing is they're going in and they're buying everything that hits the market below a certain price point. So everything that hits the market that's affordable in Florida, <clears throat> these developers uh, are, are buying everything that hits the market. And then you also have investors, and these are no brain investors. It means they have a huge chunk of money and they don't know what they're doing. They're just buying Florida out. So you have this massive collection of people who are working together to get their hands on all of the real estate in Florida uh, so that they can sell new houses or because they're investors. Most of these houses, when they buy them, they're not even moving in. Nobody's moving into these houses. So you have these ghost people even though the Florida population is, what, 21 million people? Excuse me. Even though you have 21 million people in Florida, you have like eight or nine million ghost properties. These properties, nobody lives in them. Uh, there's just investments, you know, uh, they're just sitting there. So even though there's 21 million people in Florida, you have 30 million people worth of real estate and uh, these properties aren't going anywhere. And what's, what's, what you're gonna encounter is what I encountered if you're looking to buy an affordable house in Florida. And this is what I encountered, especially in the last six months, there has been a huge crunch of affordable housing. I didn't really worry, we had an offer on our house and I didn't really worry about it because I figured I'll be able to get something in Florida for under $100,000. Didn't even cross my mind, didn't worry about it. Um, I had always looked at Alabama, but I thought that would be a, like when I was ready to retire or or when, I, I didn't think I'd, at 30 years old, I would be here moving to another state. I thought that was later on in life, you know, because um, eventually we did want to get out of Florida, but I didn't think it would come this soon. And here's why it came sooner. We we took the offer, we took the money, we didn't think about it. We, we, looked, at the, we looked at Realtor and there's plenty of properties in Florida for under $100,000. And this is where the naive and inexperienced uh, make mistakes those properties aren't really on the market. Those properties are bait properties. They'll put something on the market really cheap. And when you go there, there's it's a property that it, it's, it's, it's a bait house, basically. It, it's not something you're gonna buy. There's gonna be problems, underlying issues. But now that Realtors got you hooked in, they'll take you to another property. And they use these as bait houses to catch you. And uh, what happens is, like there's this house in Sebring, Florida. Sebring's in the central part of the state. For what I do, it's perfect. It's right in the middle of the state. I can drive out and do my videos in all directions. So I thought, what could go wrong with this property? They're asking $80,000. I'm gonna have $100,000 in the bank in a few days. I'm getting this property in Sebring, Florida. It was a concrete block house with, on half an acre and a nice subdivision. Didn't think anything of it. I uh, called the realtor, made an appointment, and I thought I was getting this house in Seaburn, Florida for $8,000. The next day, I have a tendency that before I go anywhere, I don't let people waste my time. So before we went, drove to Seaburn to, to, to go on our appointment, I, I called the real estate office again, 
just to make sure that nobody had made offers on the house or nothing weird was going on in the background. Sure enough, another realtor picks up the phone, not the one that I'm working with. So the one that I'm working with, he doesn't know anything. He thinks we're good. There's no nobody's looking at this house. You're going to get this house. I call them and I talk to another realtor. He says, well, I got three offers on that house. So the realtor that made an appointment with me, I would have driven three hours, to, two and a half, three hours to meet this guy. Knew nothing about the, what was going on with the property. I called just to confirm my appointment and they have like three offers. That house is not going to sell for $80,000. It's going to sell between 110 to 120 or more because now you have three buyers that are fighting for this property. So that went down the toilet very quickly. Um, then we had a property in Ocala, Florida. Now the property in Ocala, Florida was very old. They remodeled it and I'm pretty sure they didn't pull permits. And sure enough, they were having issues on the way of me going to see the house. They were having issues with the roof leaking, even though the roof looked new. So you could tell, you look at the, when you look at the county a property appraiser, you could tell, and before you look at any property, just always look at the property appraiser first, because you'll find stuff right off the bat, and you don't need to be a real estate attorney. You can go to the property appraiser, and you can see all types of things that are wrong with a property just by looking at that. Structures that aren't permitted, all types of problems show up. So I, I look at this property, and it's really old. It's like from the 40s, and it looks like it's like from the 80s. So uh, at some point, somebody put, did stuff to the property. They're having trouble. I just called the realtor and I said, look, I'm driving north because th there's, this was one house I was looking at, Jacksonville. Here's what happened with the Jacksonville house. Before I'll get back to the Ocala house. What happened with the Jacksonville house was that the house had been on the market for a very long time. Again, these are bait houses, I think, because there's, th this makes no sense. I, I called this realtor and uh, the house had been on the market for a while. So I thought I had a house in Jacksonville as well. Uh, the house was in the hood, needed work, but it's work that I could have done, and it had a big building out back, so those were all pluses. It wasn't a neighborhood that, now looking back on it, I would have probably not enjoyed being in the inner city, but I felt desperate and needed to make moves, so I was willing to move to Jacksonville, into the city of Jacksonville. The house was on the market for $65,000. I thought if I offered seventy, dollars it had to go because it had been on the market for so long. Well, it turns out, that when I make my phone call and I make my offer and I say, hey, look, I'll look, I'll drive to Jacksonville to see this house, but I, I, I'm working with $70,000. The, the homeowner allegedly decided he was going to jack up the price. Now that there's an interest, there's finally an interested person in the house. He decides he's going to jack up the price up to $80,000. We never talked again. I lost interest in the property. The realtor calls me back, says, oh, I have another property again two trailers out in the woods uh, that had all types of issues and liabilities. And it, it was just a nightmare situation, something I definitely would not want to touch. And, you know, these realtors at the bottom, they're, they're bottom feeders. They get stuff that's pure garbage and they try to push somebody into these pure garbage properties. You know, they're, they're bottom feeders is really what they are. Give me a second, y'all. So and then the realtor tells me, I'll, I'll give you a kickback on my commission. That right there is a red light. If you're working with a realtor or somebody and they're willing to engage in something shady with you, then they're definitely willing to engage in something shady with a homeowner or the whole package could be shady. So when I realized that this realtor was offering me kickbacks and stuff on her commission, I told myself, if this person's willing to do something that shady with me, what other shady things is this person willing to deal with? I'm not going to deal with massive, large numbers of cash with somebody who's willing to engage in illicit activity. So I told myself, red flags. Again, this thing is just full of red flags. In fact, other houses in Jacksonville ran into similar scenarios. So we go back to the Ocala house. We call her and I say, hey, I'm going to be driving past Ocala. And it's in a bad neighborhood. It's in a really, I know it's a bad neighborhood. And I, I know realtors, they're not allowed to say it's a bad neighborhood. But let's be honest, if you're moving, you need to know it's a bad neighborhood. I know it's a bad neighborhood because I run Florida hood blogs and I was in that neighborhood and the people were very friendly, but it is a hood. 
and uh you know a buyer should know that in a neighborhood has certain type of activity drug dealing environment going on because nobody wants to live in the middle of that uh, an unsuspecting person could definitely buy a property in a bad neighborhood and, and not have a single clue and, and that's covered up under some type of discrimination laws and all that but let's be honest the user, realtors use it for their advantage to find sheep that they can stuff a house into so the point is this guys the Oka house didn't work and the reason it didn't work was because the realtor um there's uh, not just the realtor was unprofessional i pushed her buttons on purpose because i i know how to work business in naples i work for people in naples that are very wealthy and when i work for very wealthy people they push their their butt they push as many buttons as they can to see what type of reaction they get out of you and i pushed all her buttons in all different types of ways to see how I could stir up this person, see if they're a professional. If you push somebody's buttons and they're professional, they're going to handle it like a pro. If you push somebody's button and all types of feelings and emotions and sentiments come up, then they're not professional. A professional person looks beyond all that. So if you're working for a realtor um, or you're doing transactions with home buyers, you can push buttons and kind of see what type of reaction you get. And a professional person is always going to overlook whatever problem they're off to the money they're going to get their money they're not going to you know if you say something stupid or if you do something whatever they're going to overlook all that because they're trying to get to the money so an unprofessional person is going to let all their colors come clear and the realtor did that i said hey uh you know the sun goes down at 8 45 that's about what time it gets dark i drove through Ocala at 7 30 she refused to show the house at 7 30 on a friday was it a friday or a thursday, thursday it was a thursday so she refused to show me the house because she said it was too late at night. Now, I know why she didn't want to show the house at night because I, the neighborhood gets active at about that. Everybody gets out of work. Kids, you know, are out and about. It finally cools down. So everybody goes outside. People are outside playing their music, doing this and that. And that's not the environment. that A realtor wants to show you a house at 10 in the morning because everybody's working. They don't want to show you a house at 7 o'clock at night in the neighborhood because you're going to realize what's going on. You're going to see a lot more. So, you know, those are all things you learn. And, and the realtor was reluctant to show the house when I was driving through Ocala. And I said, look, I'm driving. I'm, I got a truck trailer with all my belongings. I'm driving north. I'm passing by this house. And I have hundreds of houses to see and things to do. I can't. You, you, she wanted to make me wait in Ocala till the next day. I wasn't going to wait till the next day to see one house when I'm driving right past the house. And she didn't want to show it. I sent her a message and she misunderstood the message because I was I was driving so I was using the the Siri voice command thing and it trans, it didn't really transcribe what I was saying properly and she got offended at what she thought I was trying to say it, she should have realized it was a, she knew I was driving and I was texting and it was a run on sentence so she should have figured out that I was talking to Siri she got offended at what I said anyways this roadster was unprofessional and um, she got offended at every little thing easily didn't overlook my me as a customer my faults uh the property i could tell by looking at the property appraiser i mean just by doing my background homework i could just tell this was a sour deal um the property was really old on paper and it didn't look it didn't look old and, and it looked like they remodeled it. it didn't look like they pulled permits the house next door to it looked horrible so it was like if i'm going to move into a back and basically what i'm trying to say is the realtors were unprofessional they were shady and the properties were in horrible, both the one in Jacksonville or Ocala were in horrible neighborhoods. The other option that I had um, was a pushy realtor that found me on Facebook somehow. I was asking questions about moving on, on Facebook groups. And then you get these realtors that try to squeeze their way into that. I wasn't looking for a realtor. I was just asking general questions on Facebook. But this realtor got kind of pushy and squeezed her way in. And she was trying to tell me how this mobile home is in a popping off area. I'm like, look, lady, I just sold a mobile home in Naples and I got $100,000 for this mobile home. I, it was two miles from the beach and the house behind my house is early. I, I live in a million dollar neighborhood. My zip code, the average house in my zip code is like close to half a million dollars. So you're trying to tell me that a trailer between Ocala and Donellan in the middle of the woods uh, is going to be worth more than my mobile home in Naples on the beach. It's not. So I ran into this. Here are the options that I had in Florida. I would max out my budget completely to live in a ghetto, a hood, 
a trashy neighborhood with high crime, with people playing music outside day and night, a neighborhood I wouldn't want to be in, where you, when you leave your house, you're going to wonder if they're going to steal your stuff anyway, so why even have things inside the house? Um, with a drug dealer across the street, street level drug activity, do I want to live in a neighborhood like that? Max out my budget, live in a horrible neighborhood? Those were the options I had. So, and the same thing happens when I step into Alabama. It seems like realtors here are not as shady because the market's slower, so they work with you. They try to work the sale here because it's a slower market. In Florida, it's a fast market. They try to pressure you and scare you into making these crazy bids. Uh, they're just r running through the money. They're trying to get your money. They're running through it. And if you're buying in Florida, you need to be aware of these roasters that are just rushing through it. They're just rushing through the market. They don't have time to care about what you need. They have a house, it needs to sell right now. Here's a buyer, grab a buyer, sell them the house, put them in their house, get in there, 